Okay guys, so today we're going over uh, what you should do when you've got a 3-cell LiPo LiPo battery um, and it's a little puffy or it's not charging properly um, and that kind of thing. So in this case, I've got a 5,000 milliamp uh, Traxxas 3-cell battery and I'm going to be conver converting this into a 2-cell battery. Now, um, basically you're going to notice this when you're using a charger. If you've got one with a, a digital as a display, um, you'll see that one of the battery cells is lower or as soon as it is charged, it starts dropping voltage rapidly. Um, you're getting poor performance out of the battery and, and not getting very much life. Um, so basically we're going to remove that one cell because that's hurting the other two and we can still use this battery as a two cell. Um, so first let's kind of go over voltages on here. So we've got a uh, multimeter set up here so that way we can see the voltage. And I'm just going to go through, now I did charge and uh, use this battery a little bit, um, but not very much. So basically, uh, we should still have a decent uh, amount of power in this battery. So let's go ahead and check the first cell. Uh, so the first cell battery voltage is coming up at 3.93. Now I believe that is the bad cell in this battery pack, but we'll double check here. Uh, and we should be able to visually see that, of course, once we get the battery open. Here's cell number two, and that's 4.11, 4.1. So that is correct. Uh, I would say that is one of the good cells in this battery because it should be at over four volts because I haven't used it very much. And let's check cell number three. And cell number three comes in at 4.09. So again, that matches cell number two. Um, so now I can conclude that cell number one is definitely the bad battery here um, and that has been confirmed on my charger. So one thing I absolutely cannot stress enough is dealing with, with uh, LiPo batteries uh, can be very dangerous, especially if you're cutting uh, the protective um, wrap and everything on it, off of it, uh, as well as then you're now going to have cables and wires exposed. So please use extreme caution um, doing this. Obviously, I don't take any liability for you burning down your house or blowing up your hand or whatever. Um, but try to avoid uh, doing this unless you are absolutely comfortable with um, soldering and batteries and electronics and that kind of thing, um, or you are going to be extremely careful. So let's take a look uh, here at the battery. Now I've already cut a little bit off. Uh, I had some cracking on here. This wasn't from a crash, um, but I did have some wear and tear on the shrink wrap on there. So I did go and get, get that uh, partially cut off. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into it and uh, take this part and see what the cells inside look like. All right, so in this case, I'm using a box cutter. Um, use whatever tool you feel comfortable with. Um, but again, make sure you don't puncture any of the cells. Uh, kind of have a bad day. So I basically just kind of get a small slice going uh, and that lets me just tear it off rather than trying to slice the whole thing um, and risking tearing one of the cells uh, open. So there you go, just simple shrink wrap on there. Um, you can find this stuff on Amazon and, and everywhere. So if you uh, do want to finalize the battery pack and everything afterward, you're definitely going to be able to do that. Now on the Traxxas battery pack, um, you can see on here that although the uh, shrink wrap is still off, it's still got a couple more layers and everything wrapped up on there, that's, that's good. Um, but already you can tell that the uh, one of the batteries in here is puffy, especially because we've kind of got this uh, puff to it. Not good. So I'm going to go ahead and probably start, uh, looks like the wrap finalizes up on the top here. Um, so let's see if we can get that started. Again, might take you some trial and error and battery packs between different manufacturers um, might be different. So one manufacturer might not actually even have this. Um, oh yeah, there we go. So you can definitely tell that the, uh, the top cell there is puffed out. And uh, that's definitely why we're having voltage and runtime issues. Now again, you're going to want to be super careful once you're dealing up with the top uh, connectors and everything because you don't want to tear up uh, any of those wires and uh, cause, a, uh, cause a problem for yourself. So again, 
can see that uh, is now starting to be exposed. Okay, and on. So a little bit of cushion on there. Thank you, Traxxas. Okay. And then now we've just got this uh, little pad here on the very end. Should be able to get that going here. So now you'll see that the batteries are uh, glued together. Um, you can pull on them uh, to separate them. I don't really advise it because sometimes that can cause the foil of the battery to tear um, and then the demons start pouring out and burn down your house. So what we're gonna go ahead and use is floss. So hang on just a second here. Okay, and then again with the battery, if you at any point feel uncomfortable when you start doing this, go ahead and stop. Um, dispose of the battery properly. Don't keep going if you're uncomfortable. Uh, batteries are cheap enough now where, I mean, you can get uh, a decent one for 35, 40 bucks. Um, so don't, don't risk it if you're feeling uncomfortable and you get to a certain spot and it's like freaking you out or, or whatever, you're discomfortable or uncomfortable with it. Uh, just go ahead and stop, that's okay. Um, and then order a new battery. Check that out in the link. Okay, so like I was saying, um, top cell here is definitely the one that's bad. It's all puffy. Um, it is glued together. Um, so let's go ahead and use floss and get that separated. And I'm just using regular standard dental floss, nothing fancy, uh, you know, with this. And if you just kind of pull, break your, your floss, that's fun. Uh, the other thing is the glue on there does seem pretty strong, so now you can see that uh, it has been separated a little bit more, um, but we're only maybe about a third of the way through, um, so let's keep going with that. And now that I've broken the floss, I'll just go ahead and uh, wrap that up on there. And since I don't want to cut off my fingers because I was tight, I'm going to wrap it up on uh, some tools here. We have tools for a reason, we have the technology. And again, go ahead and keep going, and eventually you'll get towards the end, and your battery will be now separated. Now, once it's like this, you can really visually tell um, that the battery is uh, puffier and thicker than the others. Um, this is how they should be. You can see it's nice and flat, and this one's all puffed out like a balloon. And then uh, now that you've got your battery taken apart, waka, 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 um, go ahead and you can unsolder it. Now, if you do want to double check, you can. Um, I will, I suppose, just to make sure uh, that this is the battery indeed that is pulling up at uh, 3.9 volts. And, yep, 3.9 volts. Uh, so I do know now that is the bad battery. So at this point, you're going to need to get your soldering gun out and unsolder that. Now, when you're soldering, uh, obviously take care not to touch any of the wires uh, after they are uh, unsoldered from the pack because you don't want anything touching and shorting out. If you have another person to help with this, now would probably be the time to go uh, pester them. Okay, hello, help. Okay, so now the uh, bad cell uh, has been removed. Uh, looks like a candy bar. I don't know what they're going to do with it now. Just kidding, dispose of it properly. Um, so now you're going to be left with this. Um, so I'm going to now show you how to wire this up properly. Uh, to one, make sure it works in your car. And then two, make sure that the balance plug works on it as well. Now, before you do anything else, um, I personally would uh, remove the, the one wire that you're not using. If you have... Uh, if it was the first cell that you pulled off, it might be the yellow wire that you're removing uh, or whichever one it could be the middle one in the pack here. I don't know, obviously case by case is gonna vary, um, but let's talk about the plug. So to get that out, basically you've got the, the loose wire here. Now, if you flip the connector over from uh, the other side, you'll see the metal contacts on here. What you need to do is get a small screwdriver or a pick or uh, something of, like that and you're gonna wanna push down uh, closer towards the back and when you do that it's going to release the pin uh, that the wire has crimped on there and that will help to uh, remove the wire so let's go ahead and try and get that off so like I was saying you want to come over here um, if you're getting rid of it permanently you can probably give a pretty uh, 
pretty good push. You don't have to worry about trying to repin this afterward uh, to get that off. And if that doesn't work, you can always try using uh, a different screwdriver or something like that. Um, in this case, I'm just using a pick, uh, so that could be what the uh, problem is here. It's just not able to push in there enough. And then boom. So then you'll uh, get that little wire out and you can kind of see on there um, how it's got a little prong. So when it slides in, it snaps into that connector. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and uh, reattach the wire on here. Now, if you did have to take apart the whole battery pack, uh, it's going to be possible that you need to solder more than just one wire on here. Um, for example, if you had to move the middle cell, obviously you're gonna have to unsolder a couple more wires. Um, luckily in my case, I got lucky with it just being the outside cell um, of having to be uh, pulled off of there. Um, but just so you know, um, this isn't obviously one size fit all but this is definitely the steps on how you're going to uh, be going about that. Okay, so now you've got your uh, battery pack. I did kind of stick some of the existing uh, tape that I had pulled off uh, on the other pack and I stuck that on there to uh, keep it nice and cozy and, and protected. Um, so now my last step is going to be uh, fixing this plug. So when it comes to this plug, a lot of the chargers don't really care. So if you have, um, and you move the wires into the proper order and you plug it in, it doesn't actually notice that uh, it's not charging a, a 3S or a 4S or 5S or whatever it might be. I, however, wanted to keep it uh, looking you know how it should basically out of the package so I do have an existing uh, plug that I pulled off of another 2s pack that died um, so basically what I'm going to be doing is removing the wires off of here and inserting them into the new plug so then that way it's got the 2s plug rather than the 3s plug so same thing to do that um, basically we are going to be uh, pushing in on the pins to get those to pop out now I would suggest pop one out at a time, that way you don't have multiple wires because if you have all of three of these wires exposed at the same time, if they touch each other, there will be a short um, because they're connected to each battery. So make sure you just do one at a time. So pull out the black plug, put it in, pull out the blue plug, put it in, pull out the red one, um, same thing. And as I mentioned before, you might not have a red and a blue, you might have a blue and a yellow or a yellow and a red um, because of the way that uh, it's wired. So same thing, you're gonna wanna go and push in on that plug and get it to pop out there. So then after you've done that, you're gonna be left with this little tiny metal tab. Now you're gonna see a spot on here um, and that's the spot on the flat part on the top. So not with the prongs. See how uh, we can get this on here. So basically, not on this side, but on the flat, flatter side, there's gonna be a little tiny prong and you're gonna wanna pull that up because that's what helps hold the, uh, the connector in. So I just use a box cutter and kind of get up and under there and then that way you can pull it up. So you can pull that up and then you can see it's got a tiny little edge on there and that's what'll help snap into your connector. So like I was saying, once that plug is up, uh, go ahead and reinsert it. Um, you're gonna wanna have that spiky piece facing upward towards the open slot on the connector. So in that way, when you push that in there, it gives a good solid connection and won't come back out. So I'll go ahead and do the same for the other ones. After you get those three snapped in, you have your battery pack, which is now hopefully going to be working better, and you've got the proper balance plug on here. So from here, basically the only thing is to uh, throw on the charger, test it out, and uh, of course then put it on the car. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, get everything powered on and see what happens here. So I'll go ahead and uh, connect it, and hopefully, looks like looks like uh, 
looks like we've got power. Okay, so now from here, really the only uh, last step to do is you're gonna wanna wrap this up, um, especially make sure you double check all the connections, get those all wrapped up. Um, and then I'm gonna throw a link, so check uh, in the description here and you'll find a link to shrink wrap that you can use to cover this. Um, that'll really make it a more OEM look as well as, as protect it a lot better because otherwise just having these cells like this exposed, um, you know, they can get damaged, punctured, stabbed, scratched, dropped, um, dented, whatever, a lot easier. So check out that description for uh, shrink wrap that you can use on it. Um, otherwise, have fun and uh, enjoy your new battery pack and hopefully that gives some new life to uh, batteries that you thought otherwise were dead.